And now we get to chapter 12 of James and the Giant Peach by Roald Dahl. And you may remember what happened in the last chapter. James had crawled inside a hole inside the peach, crawled along the tunnel, licking the walls, drinking the juice, biting bits. Then he'd end up inside the stone of the peach in a room where there was a caterpillar, a ladybird, a worm, a grasshopper, and some other insects. I can't remember what they were. And he's oh, a... The, the peanut. The what? Peanut. The peanut. There's no peanut in this room. What else was there? Let me just refresh your memory a little bit. There was the grasshopper, the spider, of course. The centipede. Is that what you think of? Yes. The centipede with lots of feet. And the worm. And I, I was thinking about the centipede. Yeah, so you know, how many feet has a centipede got? I don't know. Well, most many people say a centipede has got a hundred, but it doesn't. It has far less. Maybe only forty, but... Um, people can't count, so they say it's got a hundred. So everyone thinks it's got a hundred feet, but actually a centipede doesn't have a hundred feet. So anyway, let's get on with the story. Which, which, can I see? Can you see the picture of the centipede? Yes. Where is it? Is that? Look, there's a worm. You see, the centipede has got lots of feet, but it's certainly not a hundred feet. The one, with, the one with the shoes is a centipede. Okay. Right. Lots of feet. Okay, let's read the story. Can I see which one? Maybe is it the like the one? Can I see again? Which can you see the picture again? Maybe it can. Maybe it's maybe is that the centipede? Yes. Okay. Now, James decided that this was most certainly not a time to be disagreeable, so he crossed the room to where the centipede was sitting and knelt down beside him. Thank you so much, the centipede said. You are very kind. You have lots of boots, said James. I have lots of legs, said the centipede, answering proudly, and lots of feet. One hundred to be exact. There he goes again, the earthworm cried, speaking for the first time. He simply cannot tell lies about his legs. He doesn't have anything like a hundred of them. He's only got forty-two. The trouble is that most people don't bother to count them. They just take his word. And anyway, there's nothing marvellous, you know, said to be but having lots of legs poor fellow the centipede said whispering in james's ear he's blind he can't see how splendid i look in my opinion the earthworm said the really marvelous thing is to have no legs at all and to be able to walk just the same you call that walking, cried the centipede. You're a slitherer. That's all you are. You just slither along. I glide. What's glide? Gliding is when you go smoothly like that. You glide, you, you're like a, like a plane coming down to land. You glide, very smooth. I glide, said the earthworm primer pr primly. You are a slimy beast, answered the centipede. I am not a slimy beast, the earthworm said. I am a useful and much-loved creature. Ask any gardener you like, and as for you... I am a pest, the centipede announced, grinning broadly and looking around the room for approval. He is so proud of that, the ladybird said, smiling at James. Though, for the life of me, I cannot understand why... I am the only pest in this room, cried the centipede, still grinning away. Unless you count old green grasshopper over there, but he is long past it now. He is too old to be a pest anymore. But the grasshopper, the, the, the grasshopper is, um, 
Grasshopper. Look, look, look at the grasshopper. This is the grasshopper, and that's the centipede. That's right. The old green grasshopper turned his huge black eyes to look upon the centipede and gave him a withering look. Young fellow, he said, speaking in deep, slow, scornful voice, I have never been a pest in my life. I am a musician. Here, here, said the ladybird. James, the centipede said, your name is James, isn't it? Yes. Well, James, have you ever in your life seen such a marvellous, colossal centipede as me? I certainly haven't, James answered. How on earth did you get to be like that? Very peculiar, said the centipede. Peculiar is unusual, different odd, strange, if, if that's I, peculiar. If I wear the blue armor, if I wear the blue with my teddy bear, my head down a bit, peculiar. Yes, that's right. Or if you had blue hair, you'd be very peculiar. Yeah. If I had blue and green armor, if People I, would say you're peculiar if you had blue yes. and green hair. Yes. Peculiar. Right. And so the centipede said, have you ever seen such a marvellous, colossal centipede as me? I certainly haven't, James answered. How on earth did you get like that? Very peculiar, the centipede said. Very, very peculiar indeed. Let me tell you what happened. I was messing about in the garden under the old peach tree, and suddenly a funny little green thing came wriggling past my nose. Bright green it was and extraordinarily beautiful. And it looked like some kind of tiny stone or crystal. Oh, but I know what that was, cried James. It happened to me too, said the ladybird. And me, Miss Spider said. Suddenly there was, were little green things everywhere. The soil was full of them. I actually swallowed one, the earthworm declared proudly. So did I, the ladybird said. I swallowed three, the centipede cried. But who's telling the story anyway? Don't interrupt. It's too late to tell stories now, the old grasshopper announced. It's time to go to sleep. I refuse to sleep in my boots, the centipede cried. How many more are there to come off, James? Um, uh, well, I think I've done about 20 so far, James told him. Then that leaves 80 to go, the centipede said. 22, not 80, shrieked the earthworm. He's lying again. The centipede roared with laughter. Stop pulling the earthworm's leg, the ladybird said. That sent the centipede into hysterics. Pulling his leg, he cried, wriggling with glee and pointing at the earthworm. Which leg am I pulling? You tell me that. Earthworms don't have legs. You can't pull an earthworm's leg, can you? Why? When you say you're pulling somebody's leg, it means you're playing a trick on them or you're joking. For example, if I said, uh, oh, Aidan, there's a Christmas present on your bed. You forgot. And there wasn't one. And you went to look. That means I'm pulling your leg. I'm telling you a joke. So, if I pull your leg, I tell you something that's not true, and you believe it. For example, I might say, have you seen there's a snowman in the garden? And you look out the window, and there's no snowman. I was pulling your leg. So, okay, let's say, let's pretend I say, oh my goodness, a flying saucer's landed in our garden. And you believe me, that means I'm pulling your leg. Or well, if you come home and you say to me, Daddy, Daddy, I've got a girlfriend. My girlfriend's name is Charlotte. 
you'd be pulling my leg because you haven't got a girlfriend. So anyway, let's get back to... Okay, another one, I'm pulling your leg. Let's say, I say, do you know what happened when you were asleep last night? The teddy bear came to ask me if he could have some biscuits. I said, really? I said, no, I was pulling your leg. Because the teddy bear didn't come to wake up in the night. Okay, let's read on. That leaves 80 legs to go, the centipede said. 22, not 80, shrieked the earthworm. He's lying again, the centipede roared with laughter. Stop pulling the earthworm's leg, the ladybird said to the earthworm. What he did to pull the leg? No, to the ladybird said to the what, centipede. But what, but what, what he did? He, he pretended he'd got 100 legs when he hasn't. He's only got 42. This sent the centipede into hysterics. Pulling his leg, he cried, wriggling with glee and pointing at the earthworm. Whose leg am I pulling? Ha 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 ha, you tell me that. Because the earthworm doesn't have a leg to be pulled. James decided that he rather liked the centipede. He was obviously a rascal. I guess, tell him again. Okay, stop pulling the earthworm. So the, the centipede said he's got a hundred legs. And the led, ladybird, and the earthworm doesn't believe him. So the ladybird said to the centipede, stop pulling his leg. Stop pulling the earthworm's leg. And the earthworm, the centipede, roared with laughter and said, pulling his leg, ha 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 ha. He wriggling with glee and pointing at the earthworm. Which leg am I pulling? You tell me that, ha 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 ha. Because the earthworm has no legs. James decided that he rather liked the centipede. He was obviously a rascal, but what a change it was to hear somebody again, laughing again, once in a while. Again, again, again. Again? Yes. Um, so the centipede said, how many legs have you, shoes have you taken off? And James says, I think I've done about 20 so far. And the centipede says, then that leaves 80 to go. 22, not 80, shouted the earthworm. He's lying again, said the earthworm. The centipede roared with laughter. Then the ladybird intervened. She said, stop pulling to the centipede. Ladybird said to the centipede, stop pulling the, cent the earthworm's leg. Because the, the centipede's pretending to have a hundred legs, but he hasn't. And then he laughed. So then the earthworm says to the centipede, stop pulling the earthworm's leg. Not the earthworm, the, the ladybird says to the, the centipede, stop pulling the earthworm's leg. And the centipede bursts into hysterics, laughing his head off. Pulling his leg, he said, pulling his leg, wriggling with glee and pointing at the earthworm. Which leg am I pulling? Ha ha ha, you tell me that. Look at the earthworm, he's got no legs. James decided <laughs> that he rather liked the centipede. He was obviously a rascal, but what a change it was to hear someone laughing once in a while. He had never heard Aunt Sponge or Aunt Spiker laughing. Never. He'd never heard them laughing out loud in all the time he'd been with them. We really must get some sleep, the old that? green grasser said. Green, gra green grasshopper said, we've got a tough day ahead of us tomorrow. So would you be kind enough, Miss Spider, to make the beds? So Miss Spider's going to make webs for everybody's bed, I guess. Shall we read the next chapter? Yeah. Huh? Web? No. This is now chapter 13, and it's a chapter about the spider making the beds for everybody. A few minutes later, Miss Spider had made the first bed. It was hanging from the ceiling. Huh? I think I Suspended can. by a rope of threads at either end, so that actually it looked more like a hammock than a bed. Do you know what a hammock is? No. It's like a, a thing which you hang between two trees or two posts, and it's got a it, it's, it's like a, got some strings in the middle, and you lie in the middle, and you can s swing 
a bit like having the park, you know, on that big swing. They've got that big round thing which goes swings up and down like that. That's a sort of hammock, except a hammock is usually made in the shape of a bed. A few minutes later, Miss Spider had made her first bed. It was hanging from the ceiling, suspended by a rope of threads at either end, so that it actually looked more like a hammock than a bed. But it was a mag magnificent affair, and the stuff that had to be, that, uh, and the stuff that it was made of shimmered like silk in the pale light. I do hope you'll find it comfortable, Miss Spider said to the old green grasshopper. I made it as soft and silky as I possibly could. I spun it with gossamer. That's a much better quality thread than the one I use for my own web. Oh, thank you very much, my dear lady, the old green grass copper said, climbing into the hammock. Ah, this is just what I needed. Good night, everybody. Good night. Then Miss Spider spun the next hammock and the ladybird got in. After that, she spun a long one for the centipede and an even longer one for the earthworm. And how do you like your bed? She said to James when it came to his turn. Hard or soft? I like it soft, thank you very much, James answered. For goodness sake, stop staring around with the room, staring around the room and get on with my boots, the centipede said. You and I are never going to get any sleep at this plate, and kindly line them up in neatly in pairs as you take them off. Don't just throw them over your shoulder. James worked away frantically on the centipede's boots. Each one had laces that had to be untied and loosened before it could be pulled off. And to make matters worse, all the laces were tied up in the most terrible, complicated knots that had to be unpicked with fingernails. It was just awful. It took about two hours, and by the time James had pulled off the last boot of all and had lined them all up in a row, in row, or in a row, on the floor, 21 pairs altogether, the centipede was fast asleep. So the 21 pairs... That's 21 times 2 makes 42, means the centipede has 42 sheep feet, not 100. He does have 42. Now we know. How many, seat has, how many feet has a centipede got? 42. 42. Now you know. So by the time he had got them all off and lined up the boots all in a row, 21 pairs of two makes 42 boots, the centipede was fast asleep. Wake up, centipede, whispered James, giving him a gentle dig in the stomach. It's time for bed. Thank you, my dear child, the centipede said, opening his eyes. Then he got down from the sofa and ambled across the room and crawled into his hammock. James got into his own hammock, and oh, how soft and comfortable it was compared with the hard, bare boards that his aunts had always made him sleep upon at home. Lights out, said the centipede drowsily. Nothing happened. Turn out the light, he called, raising his voice. James glanced around the room, wondering which of the others he might be talking to. But they were all asleep. The old green grasshopper was snoring loudly through his nose. The ladybird was making whistling noises as she breathed. What's it make? And the earthworm. What's it make? Like? What's the what? What's the ladybird made of? Ladybird. What does she look like? She's got a crimson sh uh, wing cover with black dots. No, he snores, the ladybird. What's her snore sound like? Yeah. Well, a bit like this. <coughs> 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 
She's breathing through her nose. The ladybird was making whistling noises as she breathed, more like this noise. And the earthworm was coiled up like a spring at one end of his hammock, wheezing and blowing through his open mouth. As for Miss Spider, she had made a lovely web for herself across one corner of the room, and James could see her crouching right in the very centre of it, mumbling softly in her dreams. I said turn out the light, shouted the centipede angrily. Are you talking to me? James asked him. Of course I'm not talking to you, you ass. You ass, not ass. And of course I'm not talking to you, you ass, the centipede replied. That crazy glowworm has gone to sleep with her light on. For the first time since entering the room, James glanced up at the ceiling, and there he saw a most extraordinary sight. Something that looked like a giant fly without wings, it was at least three feet long, was standing upside down upon its six legs in the middle of the ceiling and the tail end of this creature seemed to be literally on fire. A brilliant greenish light as bright as the brightest electric bulb was shining on its tail, out of its tail, and lighting up the whole room. Is that a glowworm? asked James, staring at the light. It doesn't look like a worm of any sort to me. Of course it's a glowworm, the centipede answered. At least that's what she calls herself. Although actually, you what? are quite right. What? You're not pulling the leg, it's really a glowworm which is lighting up the room. That, that's a picture of the glowworm. The light at the end of her tail. Is that, is that, is that the web? For and that's the, that's the hammock. For James? James's hammock. And that's the glowworm with the light at the end of her tail. So the centipede said, she isn't really a worm at all. Glowworms are never worms. They are simply lady fireflies without wings. Wake up, you lazy beast, he shouted at the glowworm. But the glowworm didn't stir. So the centipede reached out of his hammock and picked up one of his boots from the floor. Put out that wretched light, he shouted, hurling the boot up at the ceiling. Glowworm slowly opened one eye and stared at the centipede. There's no need to be rude, she said coldly, all in good time. Come on, come on, come on, shouted the centipede. I'll put it out for you. Oh, hello, James, the glowworm said, looking down and giving James a little wave and a smile. I didn't see you come in. Welcome, my dear boy, welcome, and good night. The, the glowworm said that to James. Then, the then suddenly, That's click, that. and out went the light. James Henry Trotter lay there in the darkness with his eyes wide open, listening to the strange sleeping noises that the creatures were making all around him, and wondered what on earth was going to happen to him in the morning. Already, he was beginning to like his new friends very much, and they were not nearly as terrible as they looked. In fact, they weren't terrible at all. No, they were not terrible, right? Like they seemed extremely kind and helpful, in spite of all the shouting and arguing that went on between them. Good night, old green grasshopper, he whispered. Good night, ladybird, he whispered. Good night, Miss Spider, he whispered. And before he could go through them all, he had fallen asleep. And tomorrow we'll see what happens. I wonder what will happen. Do you think it's going to be a flying peach? No, it's bedtime now. I think you're going to have to wait for a little bit.